Hey friends, it's Natalia and welcome back to She Makes 31. In today's video, we are decorating the outside of our house for Halloween. Join me for lots of spooky and family friendly decor ideas and DIYs. These ideas are so much fun to put together and will make your house the highlight of your neighborhood for kids and adults alike. All right, my friends, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, I am going to clean the outside of my home. I needed to clean here by the entryway, so I got my pressure washer and started working on getting it all clean so that I have a blank slate to work on. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Natalia. I am a mom and a wife. I have three boys. We live in South Florida and I love making decorating videos. It's one of my favorites to post here on my channel. And so I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by. I hope that you enjoy this video and get lots of ideas for your own home. So this is our third Halloween in this neighborhood and each year we add a little bit more to our decor and being outside decorating has been a way that we've become friends with our neighbors and we've built a very family friendly community. So I definitely encourage you to do that. So I've had these wood crates by our front porch for a few years now and they've kind of been like little pedestals and anchors to my decor but they were definitely in need of some help. They were so worn down it was kind of getting embarrassing so I went ahead and sanded them down and then I got this solid color acrylic stain and sealer uh, from Lowe's in a black color and I went ahead and painted it. Um, it. It goes on like a paint. It's a stain, but it actually goes on like a paint and it seals it at the same time. So that way it will match with pretty much all the decor throughout the year. And I just think it looks really nice in black. Um, so sometimes you have to work with what you have. I didn't want to go ahead and buy something new like planters or anything like that. So keeping it budget friendly, just updating what I have. And here my husband is putting up these spider web lights on our shutters. I'm zooming in on him. I was kind of making fun of him because he kind of hates doing this part because it's annoying. But um, here are our neighbors. Like I said, it actually started um, this whole like everybody started decorating after we did. Um, it encouraged and inspired people. So it's so much fun. Here I have this set of pumpkins. I normally put real pumpkins on our front porch but honestly they don't do so well we're in this south florida heat it still feels like summer and they kind of rot quickly so i wanted something that would be you know more durable and that can withstand the elements so i got that stack of pumpkins from marshall's it was $39.99 which is more than i would normally spend but i figured it will last me a long time and i won't have to buy pumpkins every year so we will buy some for like carving, but for decor, I like the um, artificial ones. So here are the stands. I have them all painted. They're all nice and dry. And I like using these to kind of anchor my, um, this garland that I have here. I have a zip ties. And so I actually zip tied this garland to the crates. That way it secured it and I didn't have to use any you know drills or anything like that to drill holes on the wall and it keeps it nice and secure we've been getting a lot of storms here lately so this makes sure that it stays in place next i'm adding some lights all of my lights are from walmart and i will have a link to my Walmart storefront. This is a new thing for me, so I'm excited. I linked pretty much 
everything that I bought at Walmart from this video will be linked on that um, storefront that you'll see in the description box but um, I love their lights they are the best price and they come in just so many different varieties um, I have the spooky twinkling ones that you see in the back hedges and then here is just the tri-color 100 count um, lights that I put on the bushes and I just love the effect that this gives. It just makes your house stand out when you have lights everywhere. And at night, it actually helps just display your decor better. And of course, we had to bring out our inflatable SpongeBob. And this year, we actually got his bestie. He was missing and we just were so excited to get Patrick. Patrick Star, the bestie of SpongeBob and we were able to find him he wasn't quite as big as spongebob so we did have to put him on a stand but i thought it was so cute to have this here we have lots of kids and families that take pictures right by the inflatables so i thought it would be super cute to have his little bestie in the picture as well and here i am adding some purple dome lights to the garland by my front door and i love how these reflect off the wall in like a really beautiful pattern so I definitely recommend the dome lights whenever you are against like a wall or something these are perfect lights for that and here from my hanging basket you guys I can't I've tried I can't really keep anything alive here in the front of my house because the Sun is like right on it every day and it kills everything so I decided to get artificial plants so I got those um, at Hobby Lobby's the greenery was from Hobby Lobby then the flowers were from Michaels and I made my own little flower arrangement for my hanging basket and here I put in my rug and all my other little decor for the front along with this welcome steak and new this year is a new doorbell I got this at Dollar Tree they have a plus section Dollar Tree plus section and I thought it was so cute because it actually sticks its tongue out and it, it actually scared me the first time I did it. So I thought it'd be fun to have that here right next to new, our doorbell. Got doorbell. You want to look at it? Yeah. Yeah. Look, you see it? Do you see it? The pile? Yeah. You want to ring it? Why? Because. That way you can see what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think? Did that scare you? <laughs> um, we got a new doorbell. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Wait. I want to see it again. If I want to touch it. Okay, don't. Ah, the tongue. All right, next I'm adding some of this spider webbing to our bushes. I love this stuff because it's so cheap and it makes such an impact on your decor. So if you're on a budget, definitely do the spider webbing. It adds that spooky effect and it only costs you a couple of bucks. All right, we're gonna start with our first DIY and it's a Halloween wreath. I got this glitter that I had on hand, purple and a black metallic-y silver color and an iridescent kind. And I also got this grapevine wreath. I've had this for many years and my first YouTube video, I actually had this wreath and I was doing a fall wreath. so. If you want to check that out it's there but I spray painted it black with some black matte spray paint and then I got some Mod Podge you could do this one of many ways this is just what I had on hand so I went ahead and brushed the Mod Podge onto the wreath and while it was still wet I went ahead and sprinkled all the different colors of glitters on top and I just love that this gives it a spooky kind of look with the black and the vines and of course the glitter just adds that little magic touch um, I went ahead and added some of these little fairy lights in Halloween colors and added some picks that I have from the Dollar Tree and from Walmart from years before this did not cost a lot to make at all 
I had most of these items on hand already and I just added a few Dollar Tree items to the wreath, gave it lots of color and it made it super fun. Next we're moving on to the most exciting DIY, it's this monster house. I saw this a long time ago and it, I could not get it off my mind. So I got this roll of brown craft paper and I put it above our archway by our entryway and I traced it because I wanted to turn our house into a monster house. So the way that I'm doing this is I'm adding teeth and eyes to my house and <laughs> making it into a silly monster, not a scary one, just like a family friendly one. So I traced these um, little imprints. Um, I, I made the imprints and then I cut them out. I made them a little bit longer so that they would kind of stick out. And so this was my template for all of my teeth. And again, I got some corrugated plastic from Home Depot. So this is water resistant because it's plastic. And so I don't have to worry about it being outside. And I got a whole sheet of it. I will link it in the description box so that you have it. But I went ahead, um, we actually got some masking tape and put it on top of the corrugated plastic and then cut out the teeth with a razor blade. Here we are making the eyeballs and so I made my own little compass with uh, some string and two pencils and uh, traced the eyes. We made them in two different sizes and cut them out. This is so fun guys. It is not a lot of money. The uh, corrugated plastic itself was a humongous sheet and it was about $20 and I was able to use leftover pieces for other parts of my decor. And then I got, for the pupils, I got some regular black acrylic paint. You can use whatever color you want. This is just what I had on hand. And found anything that was kind of circle shaped to trace in order to make the pupils. And that way I was able to easily paint pupils. And we actually made them in different sizes so it would look even funnier. And the eyeballs in different going in different directions. There's just so much you can do with this. You can, uh, my neighbor actually said afterwards that you could paint little like blue uh, or red, I'm sorry, red little veins over the eyes to make it look even really spooky and funny. There's just, like I said, a lot of options here. You can make it your own and uh, you can put this over your garage door as well if you did the teeth in a straight line. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> Okay, so in order to put this on outside, I got some of this Gorilla Tape. It's an outdoor mounting tape. It's double-sided and it's clear. I will link it um, in my Walmart storefront. Um, so this is very durable stuff. So I went ahead and put this tape on and then put the teeth in. This was just the perfect template that I have this these white pieces on my archway. Um, so I just extended them basically. Um, but yeah, you can do this even if you don't have, you know, the perfect little white pieces. You can make it your own. You can make the teeth into like sharp teeth, um, paint them. You can add, you know, stuff to them. It's just so, you could get really creative with this. Um, and here I used some pool noodles that I got from the Dollar Tree to um, create like a lip. So I thought we'd add a little bit of pop of color and personality to our monster house by putting these little lips on and this is again just so much fun and look my neighbors next door decorated too and actually quite a few of them did after we did it was so cool to see um here we used some zip ties to attach the eyeballs to the railing so i did notice that i can't really see it blends in too much so i mixed some paint we're gonna make his teeth look dirty so I'm gonna paint them and then outline them some more. So I did end up painting the teeth and then I added these bat LED icicle lights from Walmart to the balcony on the top there. Um, I wanted to get the ones that my neighbor had from Michael's but they were completely sold out and these ones from Walmart were actually a lot less expensive and gave a very similar look and then added dome lights to the railing of my balcony. 
And now it's time to set up our skeletons. This is one of my favorite things to do with our decor. So this year we decided to add skeletons to the side of our house. We hadn't decorated the side and we decided it's perfect because everybody drives through here. Um, so we got, you know, all our skeletons. We actually bought one more and they are going to be doing something really funny, which is playing hide and go seek. So <laughs> I thought it was super cute to have one of them leaning up against a tree like they're counting. And then the other ones are like trying to hide. This one here didn't quite make it in time. And so he's just hanging off the bush. Um, and that was just so much fun. And then I'm adding a, these little dome lights here to kind of highlight them at night so you can see them. I think my favorite has got to be the one here by the tree that's kind of peeking out from behind the tree. And then I um, got some of that corrugated plastic that I had left over and made a little speech bubble for the guy at the tree that says, Brady, you're not here, I come. And then here we're adding some more spider webbing to our bushes and adding a one more spider back here. This has been such a hit with the neighborhood, you guys. We have um, parents that walk by with their kids in strollers and everything and they just love seeing all the decor and then our next DIY here are these DIY monster bushes so again I'm using this corrugated plastic made the eyeballs like I did with the monster house and then I taped some of these pieces of wood you can use like paint stir sticks you can use shims leftover wood you just stick it onto the eyeballs and that kind of gives them a little bit of weight so that you can put them inside of a bush or a tree like you see me doing here this one came out so cute we have this really nice round tree so we added eyeballs to it and gave him a personality and then here for the entryway this creepy cloth very inexpensive you could get it at walmart or dollar tree and i put this over my light fixtures to make it really spooky So here's where it all began last year where we made this display by the front of our house with some skeletons but this year we are actually making them do something a little different you know change it up keep it interesting um last year the the skeletons were walking their pet spiders but this year they are having a spider race it's called the arachnid 500. <laughs> <laughs> so they are going to use um, these spiders as like little horses and they are racing each other and there is a finish line that we created guys this is so much fun you can get so creative with all the different things that you can do here we use the poles from our tiki torches to hammer them into the ground and we zip tied the skeletons to them and then we also use some clear fishing line to position them however we wanted. You can also use a broomstick or even rebar. And those leftover pieces of corrugated plastic came in real handy. We made this finish line here with a checkerboard um, so that you can kind of get what's going on and made a little arachnid 500 sign. And the last DIY I'm sharing is this DIY Halloween sign. I bought a design off of Etsy of this little skeleton and he's waving hello. I want him to be saying something but I'm not sure what yet. If you have any ideas let me know but um, I thought this was so cute. You just use the Cricut machine and some white vinyl. This just tied in all the skeletons together. All right my friends here it is my 2023 outdoor Halloween decor tour. Here is the daytime look. I added some bats here to my entryway and then I will also be showing you the nighttime look.
I can truly say that this is my favorite Halloween display that we've had yet and I'm so happy that I was able to share it with you. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye!